In this video, we'll take a look at how I got this speedometer connected up to the speed of the car. If I start going forward, you can see that both the digital and the analog speedometers tick up at the same interval. So stick around, I'll show you all about how I got that connected up. And if you want to take a minute to like the video and subscribe to the channel, that does help out the YouTube algorithms. So let's take a look at what we've done here. Um, at first, I wanted to create a couple of variables inside the car. So on the event update unit, I have a set variable for car speed and max speed. These aren't entirely necessary. I figured they would be easier to get as scene variables built into the bolt graph in the scene uh, within the project. You could just get them right from the controller every time you want to reference them. Um, but for me, it was just easier mentally to uh, connect them up to a variable uh, on the update. So that way the speed would update and the max speed would update. Uh, the max speed is important because it's uh, set as a limiter to keep the car from going a certain speed. And in this game, that's going to come in handy because I'm going to have uh, upgrades to the car and things like that. So that way we don't want the, a, a cheaper, like less evolved car to be able to go faster. So I'm going to use that as like a limiter uh, at certain intervals. Once those are set, um, we're going to go into the needle object and, and do some more work here. This is uh, The needle is just this red uh, needle object. I got this speedometer from a tutorial with the video. Uh, is actually linked in the description, so you can check that out too. There's some C-sharp script that can go with that. You can actually download that as a complete project, but I want to do it within Bolt, so that's where I got the image from that GitHub. Um, and if we look at the scene, uh, in the scene view, we can see the needle is at 565 degrees, which is where we set the zero axis to. Um, this is also the, I think I've got it in the graph here. Um, I've got the zero speed angle at 565 and the max speed angle at 331. Now the reason I did that, if I set the Z axis to zero on this needle, it's to the right, like that's what I would consider like 90 degrees, something like that. Um, and if I just backed it up to to be zero here at negative 155, the degrees cross that zero threshold. So it goes from negative 155 to a positive degree and that I wasn't able to set the total range of possible angles that way. So I just spun it around one full, <laughs> one full revolution basically um, over to 550, 565. And then that gave me the difference between 565 and 331. So that's where I got that, uh, how, I got, how I arrived at that 565 degrees uh, number. There, there may be a better way to do it, but for me, that's just what worked out. Um, for both the zero speed angle was 565 and the max, so if the if the needle max is out over here at 260, 260 miles an hour, 260, whatever I want to call it, units per second, something like that, uh, that angle is 331. Um, so those two variables have to be in place for this to work properly and for it to relate the speed to a spot on that dial. Uh, I'm going to go into full screen mode for this uh, for this graph so that way we can kind of check out what I had to do to make this work. Um, on the event start unit, I wanted to get the zero speed angle and the max speed angle so that way I could extrapolate from those two things the total angle size like what angles are possible within this uh, within this little UI widget here so we take the zero speed angle connect it up to a new vector 3 this is on the start unit grab the Z axis and then plug that in to uh, set the Euler angle of the needle object so it's only going to set the Z axis to that 565 we have it here we could type over this if we wanted to and it would change the the math um, and then from there, what we want to do is set the total angle size. So the total angle size is another variable that we have as a scene variable. Uh, I don't know that it has to be a scene variable. It might be, we might be able to use this as a graph variable. Um, I was just happy making it a scene variable because it, it seemed to fit kind of nice. Um, and so what we want to do to set the total angle size is take the, uh, all this first one does is just set the position of that of that needle just in case I messed it up in the in the in the view so it just sets it to zero when the game starts then what we want to have it do is take the zero speed angle and the max speed angle um, I've taken the absolute value uh, just a simple math function I don't know if this is all that necessary to do it just 
seemed to work out better when I when I did take the absolute value of that angle. And then we do an A minus B, so this is going to do 565 minus 311 and plug that into the total angle size. And that's all that's going to do is just set that total angle size uh, in the scene variable from 0 to 290 or, or whatever the math ends up being. I don't have to really worry about it. Uh, I wanted to do this dynamically. I could have set a total angle size variable with a calculator and just done it myself and skipped this step. But now if I change the the max speed angle or if I do something different with the speedometer, it's set dynamically. I don't have to worry about going in and changing that. Um, now on the update side, it's a little different. Uh, what it's going to do, it's going to get the car speed. This is my so here I've done both. I've got the car speed variable as a scene variable right here, and I've got the max speed from the C sharp script plugged in to uh, set the speed normalized. So what this does, it takes the current speed, divides it by the maximum speed, and gives me a, a value from zero to one, right? In other words, a percentage. And so what we wanna do is take that percentage and plug it into the possible, uh, the, the possible degree of angles in our speedometer, and that's how we connect the analog. Uh, speedometer up. I also have in here the digital speedometer. So you can see here I've got the, the digital speed uh, set as just a text widget. Uh, so this last part, that's all that does. So I can actually just compare what the speed is doing to the digital speedometer. In the game, the player will have the option to use one or the other. Um, so I won't have a digital and, a, and, and an analog. So once we have the speed normalized set, we can actually translate the speed normalized into the Euler angle of the needle. To get that to work out right, we have to first multiply the speed normalized by the total angle size. So that this is a, a percentage of one, so speed normalized is going to be um, uh, point something. If we're going 260 miles an hour, the speed normalized will be 1.0. If we're going zero, it'll be zero. And then we multiply that by the total angle size. So the total angle size is going to end up uh, indicating, uh, you know, that the left position and the right position of the needle. And then we want to subtract the zero speed angle from the the result of this multiplication. What that does is takes the zero speed angle of five sixty five. I think is what it was, right? Uh, yeah, five sixty five. And then it's going to subtract because that's the direction we want to go. Now, if you're, for some reason, your angles are different here, or maybe if it's on the right-hand side of the screen, I'm honestly not sure that would make a difference. But you might play with adding this together instead of subtracting it to make the needle go in the correct direction. I had it swooping down underneath once before when I had it added together. Uh, that didn't work out so well, so a subtraction node works really well right there. And then just drive that right into the z-axis of a new vector 3 and then plug that into the new Euler angle of the needle. And that's all it takes to get the speedometer connected up um, using, using visual scripting, using Bolt here. Um, and then of course after that all I did was just set the digital speed text. It's just a text widget called digital speed that I have the, the car speed plugged into a two string unit and then into the digital speed to set that. Um, so I'll get out of full screen here and we'll play through this one time just so you can kind of take a look at what's going on. Now, it isn't perfect. So the needle doesn't actually land on exactly the right number at exactly the right speed. It might be off by one or two uh, degrees but that's okay. Uh, I'm okay with that for now, uh, only because the player won't see the digital readout. Um, zero is right, 130 is right, and 260 is right, and that's really what matters to me. So you can see like right around 60 and 80, it's not quite perfect. Uh, that could be because the degrees on the speedometer aren't actually lined up with an angle in a circle. It could be because I don't have the needle centered exactly as I should, so that way it forms a circle. I might have resized it inappropriately. I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's pretty close, so let's take a look here. Uh, we'll hit play, and we'll just rock and roll through the level. So we can see 20 is right about 20, 40 is right about 40, 60 is pretty good, and we're speeding up. See, 80 is a little tricky there. I can go down the straightaway, you can see like we'll really start to kick up some speed. I've also played with how fast the car is at first also, just because I wanted it to feel like we're racing real quick. Of 130, we're about 130. Oh, I've crashed. 
Um, so you can see it works good enough for now and for what we want it to do. It's also connected to the speed of the car, the velocity, not necessarily uh, the, the torque of the wheel. So if we're falling or if we're flying, it'll still calculate that speed. Um, so that might be a little, a little strange to deal with, but I'm not planning on having any jumps or anything in this game. Um, so yeah, that's how I got that speedometer connected up. We can see all the flows are working properly. Um, there's no flow for the, for the event start because that's already happened. Um, if you hold the alt key down, you can drag around in the graph. I feel like that's a pretty good tip. Um, but yeah, you can see the, the speed normalized is actually ticking up and down a little bit, uh, which is kind of strange, but it doesn't seem to affect the, the speedometer at all. So I'm happy with that too. It's working out really well. Um, that's that. So now that we have the timer working, we've got the speedometer connected up. In the next steps, what we can do, uh, once we make the level complete, level start uh, UI elements, we can actually connect that timer up to like a record timer and we can do like a max speed, um, kind of have some analytics after the fact. Um, and then we can start spawning levels. So it's really close to being a game. Uh, I'm kind of happy with the progress so far. I won't be able to work on this game in the next couple of weeks. I've got a game jam coming up that I'm going to spend some time working on, so that's going to be kind of fun for me. Um, but I do appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me and checking out these videos. Uh, remember to subscribe. It does help the metrics a little bit for us. Uh, YouTube likes that, <laughs> that kind of thing. If you comment and subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, thanks for watching so much.